We cannot get rich quick, but we can definitely get rich skin tones quick. And that's what we're going to do in today's video. Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixin Perfect. How are you doing? I hope you're having a great day and making it a beautiful one. So without any further ado, let's get started. back in the magical world of photoshop and if you wish to go ahead and download this photo and follow along you my friend already know what to do check the links in the description the first thing we'll do here is fix the skin tone don't worry about making it pop don't worry about making it dramatic or ecstatic none of that just make it uniform and get it to look right and for it we're going to create a gradient map click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose gradient map gradient map maps the colors of highlights and shadows and everything in between so right here on the left hand side we have white and that is why the shadows are colored white and the right hand side is black and that is why the highlights are black so we have to set this to the skin tone so first of all let's turn off the gradient map so that we can see the skin tones and then single click on this one now when you try to sample anything let's say we want to sample the highlights of the skin we cannot sample anything anywhere we click it's going to show up white why is that happening it is happening because the mask is selected by default adobe needs to fix this make sure that the symbol of the adjustment layer is selected not the mask because the mask is white right so now open up the properties by double clicking right here single click right here and for the highlights of the skin single click on the highlights slider single click right here to pick the colors you can also double click to pick the colors and let us pick this color right here you can change this later don't worry about it hit ok and for the shadows you can also double click directly on the slider but with graphic tablets sometimes it is challenging so let us pick this color for the shadows and for the midtones create a point right here create a slider single click and let us pick something like this keep in mind it is around the middle so that color works fine hit ok and hit ok for now and simply turn on the gradient map now keep in mind we only wanted the color out of this so let us change the blend mode from normal to color because that is exactly what we want and there you go here is the before here's the after the skin tones seem to have been improved but then again this is all over the image we only want it on the skin now how do we select the skin there are several ways first of all make sure the gradient map is turned off then go to select and color range now you can choose skin tones right here but then again it's not very accurate it's also selecting parts of the hair and the skin tones are not selected properly the background is also selected you can also try checking detect faces it does improve the selection but still it's all over the place so in this case it wouldn't work the other way is using manual color range so when we went to color range by going to select color range you can also choose sampled colors and try clicking on the skin but then again it's again also selecting other parts of the image so in this case doing it manually with a simple brush is your best bet so turn this on select the mask press control or command i to invert the mask now take the brush white as the foreground color just simply paint on the skin now how do you know you have chosen the best colors when you do paint on the skin it should not change the colors much that is how you know you have picked the best colors now keep in mind even if the colors are not nice you can always change them later have a look how easily we have matched the color of the face with that of the body both were different let's paint now of course this is not the color we finally want we'll change those but for right now just paint on the skin now let's remove it from the teeth and the eyes zoom in set black as the foreground color how do we do that press x to toggle between the foreground and the background and if they are set to some other color like crazy gray press d to set them to defaults black and white now set them to black and just paint in the eyes similarly the teeth and of course inside the mouth in some cases where the subject is wearing a lipstick you might also have to paint on the lips so we can decrease the flow right here to about 10% and slightly paint on the lips as well zoom out and now let's pick the colors so we'll go to the gradient by double clicking right here single clicking right here and now let's pick the best color for the highlights now keep in mind this is completely artistic your preferences might be completely different from mine and that's completely fine even better than fine so with the highlight slider selected single click right here you can either increase the saturation see what changes it creates you can make it brighter or darker you can also change the hue if you like make it slightly more saturated let's leave it at that it's not making that big of a change for the shadows let's pick them and let's try increasing or decreasing the saturation of course a decreased saturation looks nicer hit okay and for the midtones let's try increasing or decreasing saturation slightly increased saturation looks interesting so we're going to keep it at that for now for the highlights as well i'm going to decrease the saturation and this looks too orange-ish now we can always adjust them later after we have worked with the contrast on top of it once we add the contrast you will need some changes here let's take a look at the before and after so here's the before here's the after this is way too harsh so let us decrease the opacity to about 
Let's keep it at about 60 for now. Now this is subtle, this is nice. Let's add the contrast. Single click on the adjustment layer and you know what we're gonna add, our favorite curves. So let's make it as bright as we possibly can without losing details. So till this point, there was no details, so that's gonna be fine. Also, you can hold the Alt key or the Option key and bring this slider just at the moment where you begin to see artifacts, that's when we are losing details. So let's stop right over there. You can also make the highlights slightly brighter. Also feel free to use the hand right there. Click and drag up the highlights. You can also click and drag in the shadows. There you go, I love this look. After you have created this contrast, let me make it slightly darker in the shadows as well. You can also experiment with brightening up this area a little bit. Now you can work with the skin tones even more freely. So here's before gradient map. Look at these areas without colors. Here's after it. Now let's work with the colors. By the way, if you wanna save time on masking the skin tone, you can use this plugin. So let's make a copy of the background layer by pressing Control or Command J. Let's go to filter, retouch for me, and retouch for me skin mask. Do you need this plugin? No, but I use it all the time because I don't have to manually mask everything. So it analyzes the skin and it masks it automatically. Now it's not 100% perfect, but it's more than okay. You can choose to mask all of the skin. You can choose to mask just the face or just the body right here. And you can increase or decrease the sensitivity. For example, let's choose all skin and you can decrease or increase the sensitivity from right here. So this seems to be about right. And once you hit apply, it just only keeps the skin. Now, if you create a mask, it will make a mask as well, but this is fine for me because I can hold a control or command, click on it, and it makes a selection of the skin. So even if I didn't have this mask, with the selection active, you can just simply click on the mask button, and there you will have it. So that's an incredible little plugin that you can use to mask the skin. It does a fantastic job, even if the color of the dress is very similar to that of the skin. So you can try it out for free. There are discounts. I'll link all of that up in the description. But I also showed you the manual method in case you don't want to use it. Now let's go back to the properties of the gradient map. Single click right here. And now choose the colors. Let's make it less saturated because we want a little bit white in there. Hit OK. For the midtones, you can make it brighter or darker more saturated or less saturated, see what works good for you, completely artistic. Also keep in mind, you can change the hue. So if we bring it down, it's gonna become more reddish. If you bring it up, it's gonna become more greenish. So this color works the best for me, hit okay. And for the shadows, this saturation is fine. You can make it brighter if you wish to, but this darkness is fine as well. The hue is perfect, let's hit okay, let's hit okay again. Again, I recommend that you go ahead and take a break and this time, let us take a look at the works of the artists that you look up to and get inspired and then get back to your image and feel bad about how far you have to go or feel inspired, the choice is yours. You'll start to look at things that need fixing and in this case, we may need to do minor color corrections. For example, have a look at the lips. These areas are pinkish, but this area is discolored. Now we don't want to color it with the color of the skin, so we need to create a brand new layer at the top, change the blend mode from normal to color. You can take the brush, decrease the flow to about 10%, hold the Alt key or the Option key, take a sample and just paint in that area. There you go. That was how easy it was to fix. Similarly, right here as well, take a sample and paint. Take a sample from here and let's try that and paint. Let us take a look at the before and after. This is the before. Look at these areas, discolored. Here's the after, fixed. You can pick your own colors as well, but picking up colors from the same image seems to be working the best. For example, this area for some reason is discolored. So pick a color and simply paint. Just by doing that, it improves the image a lot. Here's the before, lots of discolored areas even inside the mouth. Let's turn it on, all of those are Fixed. Now to make the skin even more even, you can do a simple dodging and burning and the simplest way to do that is simply creating a new layer right here and let's name it D and B, dodge and burn. Take the brush, white and black as foreground and background colors and how do we set it to that? Press D for defaults, it sets to black and white. Now change the blend mode of this layer from normal to soft light right here and start painting. Any areas you want to brighten, paint that with white. Any areas you want to darken, paint that with black. Decrease the flow to about one or 2%. So I'm gonna set it to 1% to have maximum control. Let's set it to white. Let's do this eye bag right here. Simply paint, that's all, it's not hard. Now I know it takes a little bit of practice, but it's super fun to do. And once you get a hang of it, you'll fall in love with this. Just a few seconds of dodging and burning. I didn't even work hard over there. Here's the before, here's the after. Look at the difference once you zoom out. 
Here's the before, here's the after. Maintains all the texture, looks fantastic, looks natural. That's the most important part. Now you can take all the time in the world to do manual dodging and burning and keep in mind, nothing beats the quality of manual dodging and burning. But most of the times, I simply use a plugin unless it's a very important image. Also, the plugin gives you a fantastic starting point anyway. So let's turn off the dodging and burning layer and this is how it works. Simply create a stamp visible layer at the top and for it, you can press Control, Alt, Shift and E. Now it doesn't work because the topmost layer is turned off. So create a new layer, press Control, Alt, Shift and E and this is dodging and burning with plugin. Let's name it that way. Let's go to filter, retouch for me and retouch for me dodge burn. It does everything automatically. You can choose how much dodging and burning you want. So this is 0% and as you begin to increase, look at the dodging and burning. It's so nice and natural. So I'm going to keep it at this level about 146%. You can turn on soft light layer right here, hit apply. And this is a soft light layer and everything right here is adjustable. So whatever we did in the dodging and burning layer, it is the exact same thing but automatic. Now, although it is in gray layer, it doesn't really matter. Let's change it to soft light. And there you have it. So here's the before, here's the after, everything automatic. Let's take a look at the overall before and after. So here's the before, here is the after. Now, if you want to do a little more, you can of course create a hue saturation adjustment layer. You can target the skin tones. You can increase the range right here. You can decrease the overall saturation of it a little bit. You can change the hue a little bit. See what works best for you. So I'm going to set it to minus one, decrease the saturation slightly. And there you have it. I would go with this style. So that's how to make flawless, uniform, beautiful skin tones in Photoshop. Just a quick recap. All you have to do is to create a gradient map at the top. Pick a color for the highlights. Pick a color for the midtones, and pick one for the shadows. And then you can modify the colors and choose what you like. Mask in the skin. You can manually do it or use a plugin like Retouch For Me Skin Mask and then set the opacity to how natural you want it. On top of it, you can create a curves adjustment layer to add contrast and then there's going to be some areas which would need micro color correction and for it, simply create a layer with the blend mode set to color. Just take a sample and start painting and color those discolored areas or miscolored areas. And then you can of course do dodging and burning, hue saturation according to your taste and you're pretty much good to go. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.